Hello and welcome to episode 18 of the Magazine Monologues. The article today is also going to be coming out of the Oceans issue of National Geographic, May 2021. It is titled uh, 28 Days Under the Sea. It was written by Laurent Ballesta. Ballesta. It's a French name, so I apologize again on that pronunciation. Uh, he is a naturalist photographer, so not generally a writer, but I thought it was well written. Um, I'm, you know, I'm sure he got editing, I'm sure he's written other things before, but normally with the magazines, it's one person writes, one person does photos. He did photos and writing for this, and I thought it was well done. Uh, this is gonna be a short one, don't worry, this is not gonna be another, like, 15 minute video. I would be surprised if it went more than five minutes. I just wanted to talk about this one because I thought it was really interesting. It's himself and three other men in July 2019 did a long-term pressurized diving project, which normally if you dive really deep, which the oil industry uses a lot of this, you have to saturate in these like super pressurized containers. So that way you don't have to go through a multi-hour long process of compressing and decompressing to go to the depths they're going. They were diving at 410 feet, I think was the deepest they went. They might've gone deeper, but the picture, the deepest picture that they had was from 410 feet. Uh, the article itself is very short. It's three pages and I mean, National Geographic short. Again, every magazine context is a little different. But yeah, so they just did deep sea diving. They did things where uh, they were down at 225 feet, 410 feet, whatever. And they were just going to look at wildlife or to see the human impact, which they did some tests with sediment on the ocean floor in the Mediterranean. Uh, I think they also gathered some shrimp and like tested their gut and they found, you know, plastics and pollutants and all that stuff. Doesn't surprise anybody, still terrible. But the other thing is they, they saw some potentially, I mean, I don't actually know, but like potentially never before photographed um, Roman ship ruins because all the clay pots are down there. The ship has long gone away, the wooden ship, but the clay pots are down there. Uh, other than that, just a couple of fun stats. It was four men for 28 days sharing 55 square feet of a hyper-pressurized saturated space. The pressure was depending, so the way I believe it worked is they were in a container that was being towed by a barge that was pressurized and they'd get food passed through a whole airlock system for them and they had a bathroom which I assume is just a hole it lead in into the ocean at that point. Uh, and the pressure I assume would change based on how deep they were going to go. I really hope that's what they did but it was up to 13 times pressure at sea level and it, during the, the very hyper, I'm saying hyper pressure, I don't think that's a technical term but hyper just means like very. Um, but the very pressurized environment they were in was 97% helium and 3% oxygen. <laughs> so one, one funny thing that got noted in here is because of all the helium, it made their voices like too high to actually really function. And so they had to communicate using a microphone system amongst themselves to digitally alter the voice to make it back into like more audible and understandable. And I just, I don't know why, I just thought that was hilarious. Spending 28 days of just speaking as if you were pulling out only helium balloon breaths, just seems hilarious to me. But it is cool. Uh, I am, so I'm getting my scuba diving license next month. And I mean, I, recreationally you only the absolute most you go down is 60 feet i don't think i'm going to go down much below 40 feet because it's just the where i'm getting my license is in a quarry i believe the quarry is 60 feet deep whatever um but it's kind of mind-blowing to me to think of spending 28 days in oh and i forgot to mention how large it was i think 55 square feet if i said it earlier i've said it again 55 square feet for four adult men for 28 days um I think the space would be more problematic than anything that and just like what in the world do you do so what they said is their escape were the dives because normally if you dive on the sea floor without doing saturation which is what this process is it takes hours to go down then you get five ten minutes on the sea floor and then you have to go back up um otherwise you'll die uh but with saturation they were able to spend hours so what they said is they looked forward to their, you know, hour, multiple hour long dives each day. And it was exhausting for two reasons. A, it's just physically tiring, I'm sure, um, especially being down that deep. B, it gets insanely cold, which they, the guy who did this said that he's photographed dives all over the world, Arctic, Antarctica, 
South Pacific, I mean, South Pacific's a warm example, but I'm just saying all over. And he said this is the coldest that he's ever, ever felt because the helium would actually kind of cool them from the inside while they were breathing. Um, and so it was just wildly cold, in, like inside and out. But he survived, so like he didn't get hypothermia 400 feet down and die. Um, but yeah, it just seems like a wild, wild experience to me. I'm all about trying new experiences, as I'm sure three out of three, so 100% of the viewers know I really, really want to go to space. And I'm like, that's like my life goal. I'm going to do it. Even if it means I go bankrupt at 50 to pay for it, like I'm going to space. But saturation diving, um, diving down where only 1% of the sun penetrates, I don't know if that's appealing. I'm not, I'm not ruling it out, but it's not something that I'm like immediately jumping on board with. Skydiving, sure. Bungee jumping is another one that I'm not certain because I'm just thinking through when you bungee, when you go down and you get pulled back up, it feels like all the blood would really rush to your head. And I just, that doesn't seem comfortable. The actual jumping part, uh, it's fine, whatever. It's the, the idea of being hanging upside down and then the jerk. That's all unrelated to the article. I apologize. Uh, the article was very good. It was very interesting. Again, though, National Geographic is known for their pictures. So let's see if I can pull any of these pictures out. I can't fast. They were cool. They were all deep sea. So like none of the pictures were less than 180 feet, I think. So it was cool animals, cool reefs. Um, they, they being he, <laughs> um, recorded the first images of a specific squid species mating, which seems like a cool thing. I mean, it, it always seems like kind of nitty gritty to get down and stuff, but like 80% of the ocean's floor is undiscovered. So every time you get new stuff, I think it's very interesting. Um, but yeah. So thanks for joining me. And the next, the next episode is not really going to be an article. It's going to be a discussion of the Boat International Magazine, and that will make sense when I get there. Alrighty, I'll see you guys.